Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop for part two of making this unbelievably large Damascus steel kukri. This is going to be a lot of fun and I'm really pumped that you're here. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to do on here is you can see all of this. This is all forged scale and it's extremely hard and the abrasives on my, on my belt grinders, I won't cut through it. So I'm going to take this to the large angle grinder and I'm going to grind all of the surfaces completely clean with that. Let's make a knife. So I have all of the scale ground off, they're obviously extraordinarily rough finish, nice and thick. I think the next port of call is going to be profiling it a lot more accurately and I'm going to do this with the, uh, with the big grinder with a nice coarse 60 grit belt and just basically start, uh, start getting a little closer. So I've now ground in the radii for the for where the scale connects to the bolster and where the bolster transitions into the blade itself. That went pretty well with a 16 millimeter contact wheel on my belt grinder. Um, after which I then went in with a larger contact wheel and then start kind of radiusing this out here, getting a little bit of a contour and bringing this down. This is going to make like a little bit of a guard, I think, before I then cut in. There have got to be some file marks in there before the actual, I believe you call it a recovery. Picasso, right about here, where it transitions into actual sharp bladiness. as I try to grind the flats on this blade, I'm actually really struggling because as I go onto the flat platen, firstly this is tapering in this direction, secondly it's got this curve, so as I go onto the flat platen and I try to draw it through, I'm lifting up here, trying to keep this straight, lifting up, having to make all these weird adjustments, and I tell you, it is, I'm struggling so much trying to keep this flat. This is now made up of loads of lift, different little kind of different little minute edges and variation in the angle. I tried going up the grits a little bit to see if I could kind of um, try evening that out a little bit. I'm now at 240, starting to have a little bit of success flattening it, but I still got a lot more work to do before this is flat and I can start putting the bevels in. Don't let anybody ever tell you that knife making is easy. I, <laughs> every time I make a knife, it's a massive struggle and I'm quite sure this is not the easiest of knives to grind anyway as it is. I'm not looking forward to getting onto the bevel. That's going to be a whole nother level of difficulty. So it's not perfectly flat. I might have to end up ditching the idea of making it perfectly flat and do like a complete convex thing. We're going to see how that goes. For now, however, before I try and move on to the bevel, try is the, try is the key word, on the kukris, they have this little, uh, these little indents here. Somebody actually told me that that was used in case a Gurkha, who used the kukri, I believe, in case they drew their kukri and they did not touch human blood, they would prick themselves on this little thing that looks a little bit like this. 
have these two little indents, spike, indent up, and then ricasso, I think is what it's called, and bevel. And this little spike right here, apparently they'd prick themselves on it to draw their own blood. Because this knife must touch human blood every time it's drawn. I assure you, any time this touches any human blood, it's going to be my own and it's going to be on accident. So this doesn't have any of the uh, intended purposes an original kukri does. So, I think I'm going to run onto the mill and use this little carbide end mill to cut these little slots in there. This is a 5mm carbide end mill. I should be able to just run in there, probably do the whole, whole, uh, whole thing in one pass, just whoop, whoop, keep that little sharp bit in there, and that should go pretty well. So once while I was trying to work out how to best mount something in my, uh, in my mill to drill some holes, I made up this little jig here, which is pretty interesting. It's basically some, you know, 4mm, no, 6mm tapped holes and some little socket heads. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is, uh, once I put my, once I put my collet here in the bridge port, I'm then basically just going to throw this in the vise, in there on some kind of one, two, three blocks or something like that, whatever it is, make sure it's parallel. I can then screw my blade to this, and then have a pretty secure mount to be able to then mill into it. This is just a little bit too long to fit in the vise, so I'm going to hack it off with a bandsaw and I'll be right back. I'm back, it's done. So because this is technically tapered, if I clamp down on this, it's going to bend it. So, uh, yeah, AVE, eat your heart out. Well, would you look at that? That actually worked. I probably should have thought about doing this before I had it already mounted up in the mill and I took it out of there, but I'm gonna dicum it up. Ooh, fun memories with this dicum. See that big blue stain over there? I'm gonna dicum it up, let it all dry, and, uh, and then I'm gonna scribe some lines and then drill a bunch of holes so that I can put some pins in there for the handle. While this dries, and speaking of handles, this is the handle material I'm gonna be using. It is G10, it's black, and it's about 3 eighths of an inch thick, and I think that'll go nicely on that. I've only ever used woods before, so using, I guess you call this a synthetic material, Using a synthetic material for the first time is going to be exciting and I hope it works well with the overall aesthetic of the piece. End of part two of making this ginormous Damascus steel kukri. Thank you very much for watching this far. I'm very excited with how this is turning out. You know, this is this has the uh, the makings of a really really nice piece. I'm very excited. What I'm going to be doing tomorrow is I'm going to be grinding in my bevels, getting them set, and then going in for the heat treat, the quench, before doing the final polish, going into the etch and beginning the work on the handle scales. We're gonna see how far we get tomorrow. Be sure to watch part three. There's gonna be a square right here if you're watching in the future. Be sure to hit subscribe too and watch some of my other videos. Pleasure as always having you here in the workshop. I look forward to completing, with th completing this with you on the next episode. Looking forward to seeing you guys on the live show tomorrow night too. Have a great day, I'll see you soon. Bye.